Okay, so last lecture we talked about the marriage of Isabella and Ferdinand, the Civil War. They win the Civil War against Juana, and Juana is defeated. Isabella is recognized definitively as the Queen of Castilla. That means the kingdoms of Castilla and Aragon are now recognized as united, and we have Spain. There's one more piece of the puzzle here, which is in the south. In the south of what's the peninsula on which Spain, where Spain is, there's a small kingdom, the kingdom of Granada, which is a Muslim kingdom. This is the last holdout of the Islamic Caliphate that was in Spain for much of the Middle Ages. If you think back to what you learned last year down the hallway there, in 711, Arabs, Muslim Arabs, had invaded Spain from North Africa. They had conquered Christian Africa, established Islamic rule there, and then in 711, crossed the Mediterranean Sea up into Spain and established Islamic rule in Spain. And for much of the Middle Ages, you had Christian knights who were trying to reconquer Spain, what was called the Reconquista, the reconquering of Christian territory in Spain from Islamic Arabs, the descendants of Islamic Arabs. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so one of the first things that Isabella and Ferdinand do when they become king and queen of Spain is to attempt to reconquer Granada. Okay? So the effort to reconquer this Spain had been ongoing through the Middle Ages off and on, okay? Things like civil wars obviously interrupt that, okay? By the time uh, Isabella and Ferdinand had won their own civil war, right? Mo most of Spain had already been reconquered, but you still had this small kingdom in the south there, Granada. So three years after they win their civil war, that's when they begin their initiative to take back Granada for Spain and incorporate it into their new kingdom of Spain, okay? Now, they got to recruit fighters for this. They got to recruit knights to come in and help them with this. Okay, so what they do is they get the Pope, they get permission from the Pope to declare their war on Granada, a crusade. And that means, boom, you got all sorts of people that want to come and participate in the crusade. Okay, why? Well, there's certain spiritual benefits if, uh, 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 for Catholics in going on a crusade. You get an indulgence. What is an indulgence? Well, it's not a forgiveness for your sins. The Catholics say only God can forgive your sins through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. However, Catholics believe in this place called purgatory, where after you die, if you've got uh, some um, consequences to your soul, some damage to your soul from your sins, purgatory is where you go to get purified before you go straight up to heaven in, God's pr in the fullness of God's presence. An indulgence means you don't have to go to purgatory. Remit it. Gone. Okay. So you got all these people that are excited. And okay, now you get the, you get that, but then you, if you sin again, you're in the same boat. You got to go through the whole thing again. But anyway, you got all these knights that want to get the indulgence, so they're coming to Spain to fight in the crusade against uh, the kingdom of Granada. Okay. So that's starting up in 1482. It's going to take 10 years for them to accomplish the conquest of Granada. Now, they're going to benefit because Granada is undergoing a lot of instability, okay? They've got some problems in Granada, like they had problems in Aragon, like they had problems in Castilla. You see themes here. Medieval monarchies are, they're, they're not stable, okay? You can't control the people. Anyway, in, <clears throat> in Granada, you have, the trouble is the king of Granada, uh, what's his name? Muley Hassan, he was the king of Granada. He's got sons, he's got uh, two sons who rebel against him, Boabdil and Yusuf. Boabdil declares himself king. You've got a civil war now in Granada. The king's brother, El Zagal, is loyal to him. So you've got these two factions fighting in Granada the way you had two factions fighting in Castilla uh, for, for Isabella and one for Isabella, one for one. Okay, so civil war in Granada. And again, Ferdinand does what he did, the same thing he did in Castilla, which is he goes into Granada and he's able to persuade people to join him, to be loyal to him and Isabella. Okay, so he's able to um, take, take advantage in a good way of the divisions within Granada. Okay, and this just contributes to the internal instability. And meanwhile, you've got the Crusaders, um, you know, having, <clears throat> gradually getting territory back uh, 
gaining territory in small battles along the edges of, of Granada. Whole thing comes together in 1491-92 with the siege of Granada, which is the central and the main city of the kingdom is named after the kingdom Granada. The Spanish put the city under siege for about a year. In fact, they established almost an entire city on the outskirts of the city of Granada, which is where all the Spanish court comes. Isabella and Ferdinand are there with their kids at this point, and all the Spanish army, the, the crusaders are all there besieging this city um, for about a year. And so finally Granada capitulates and the kingdom of Granada ceases to be, and you have it incorporated now into the kingdom of Spain. Okay? All right. Now, what happens to the Muslim people that live in Granada? Well, they're guaranteed, as terms of their surrender, that they can keep their property, right? And also, that they can remain Muslim. According to Catholic Church, you are, a forced baptism to Christianity is not valid. You can't force somebody to convert. It has to be a personal choice to accept Christ's gift of grace. So you cannot force someone to convert. It would not be a valid thing. Okay. So initially they are allowed to, uh, you know, uh, well, technically they're always allowed to remain Muslim. But Isabella and Ferdinand don't want, they're not particularly interested in having Muslim people within their kingdom because to them, they don't, they don't trust them to be loyal. Okay, and so they start to provide certain incentives for Muslims to leave Spain if they don't want to convert. All right, and initially all the rich Muslims are able to get away. They were able to, to, to move to North Africa or other Muslim countries. It's the more poor people who don't have as much many options of leaving. Okay, and, but they're allowed to stay and so and initially the efforts are, okay, well, yes, uh, you know, they, Isabella and Fernand would like them to convert. They try to persuade them to convert, so on and so forth. You can't force them. But finally, there's a rebellion of um, <clears throat> Muslim peoples or formerly Muslim peoples who maybe didn't have the most um, uh, <clears throat> authentic conversion. Maybe they converted for to, 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 um, to fit in, but then didn't really in their heart convert. There's a rebellion. And so after that rebellion, then Isabella and Ferdinand issue a decree whereby the, um, the Muslims either have to migrate or convert. Okay, So initially, you had the situation where they were tolerated, they were allowed to stay, but then they are forced to leave. Okay, So um, <clears throat> keep in mind, this is the bottom line of this lecture, right? which is that 1492, the Reconquista is completed. There are no more Muslims in Spain. 1492 then is also the year that Isabella and Ferdinand are going to turn their attention to Columbus, okay?